This is one of those special video moments where I'm making this because I just got the 50th email in a row outlining what I think is a problem. Um, and so then we find ourselves here where I just drag this stuff together and cobble together a really terrible looking backdrop. Um, but I've got my drawing here, which I just made up. This is based on an actual house that I've helped a client with. And the question is, can I um, build a high performance home that's gonna be comfortable and healthy and all this stuff without any duct work at all? There's this kind of epidemic of ductlessness and I, I am in part guilty of having said stuff like this in the past where the duct system is the whole problem and in many cases in older homes, yes, that's true. Uh, the equipment might be 30 years old and then get replaced with brand new equipment that's perfect and it won't work because the duct system is at fault. But if you are designing a home, I hi highly, highly, highly recommend <laughs> that you think about your duct work because when we talk about the five factors for ventilation for homes, which is how you make homes healthy, not just energy efficient or comfortable, you get circulation, and then none of the rest of them else matter. If you don't get circulation right, then, then we're at, at a loss here um, because the capture and filtration is the main way you're gonna clean the air. You have no way of filtering air if you're just using ductless mini splits. And I love ductless mini splits. I have a ductless mini split conditioning this studio that I'm talking to you from. It's a Mitsubishi. It's a three quarter ton. I have a half ton Mitsubishi out of my tiny house. Love ductless mini splits in the right application, but they are not a silver bullet, nothing is a silver bullet for every single situation. So when I hear about ductless mini splits, when I hear about high velocity air conditioning systems that are these little tubes like pool hose, basically that you're running around that are, that are gonna be making your life easier. When I hear about radiant flooring in cold climates, that's the dream. We all know that that's what's advertised on television, but we all know also if you think, stop to think about it, that can't be how the world works. Like it's a system. So here is this house. Let's just look through the lens of this floor plan. What would happen if we didn't have a duct system? If we had whole house mini splits? First of all, the equipment that we are buying now is uh, hugely multiplied. We have a mini split head in the office. We have a mini split head in the bathroom, in the bedroom. This bathroom is gonna have to get its air somehow from these, we're gonna have to install what's called a transfer fan across this wall so that we take air from the office and pump it into the bathroom. That is going to make the bathroom a pressurized zone, which we probably don't want. We can also take air from the bathroom and pump it into the office, but that gets a little weird for reasons I'm sure you can think of. Um, the bathroom has its own exhaust system, of course, and we're gonna ha I'm gonna have other videos because I've got a lot of things to talk about with this floor plan right here, so more is forthcoming. But we've got a mini split head in the great room. Just one, you don't need two because one can be sized up to you know a ton, two tons, whatever you need. In an efficient home that's gonna be well insulated and airtight, you're not gonna need a lot of HVAC. And I know this because I do manual J calculations for people all over the country who are building high performance and you would be amazed at how small we're getting by. I just literally delivered one this morning that was specking two tons of air conditioning for about 5,000 square feet of living space uh, with a conditioned attic, by the way. The garage is not part of this conversation. You're gonna need a mini split head in the, in the bedroom. Then we're left with the closet, the laundry room, the bathroom here, the storage room, and the bathroom, all without any direct conditioning device. So we're gonna to have to use that transfer fan idea on a lot of these different things to try and get the air to circulate. Also, we're gonna to have to keep fans running all the time, and ceiling fans are a part of your HVC system. Remember that? Running on low all the time. But if we have uh, no duct system, then we have no filter because the filters that are in these ductless mini splits are not good. They are there to protect the equipment only. Um, they, ha they might have a little things like Mitsubishi has some very nice little bells and whistles that they've added like um, you know, a, an allergen filter and a carbon filter and they're literally about that big. Like I don't know how much air goes through that, but it's not a whole lot. I, I applaud them for trying but we need to really take filtration seriously when we're building homes very airtight and then doing things in them like being, cooking, cleaning. And if you wanna learn more about home chem, got a whole playlist that I'm linking on screen right now. 
So let's just say, okay, well, we need to filter. We need to use something like if I'm gonna have a, a load on this house, let's say this house is like 3,000 square feet with 10 foot ceilings, 30,000 cubic feet. I divide that by 60 and I get 500 CFM. If I have a, a one and a half ton load for this entire house, which is very likely, then I only have 600 CFM to play with. And that means that I can only clean the air in my house one time per hour. And that's it. I have no ability to boost above that. And so I'm gonna need a really nice filter. Let's say a MERV 16 in that case. So I can't use a MERV 16 on a ductless mini split. I'm gonna have now a duct system over here. This room has vaulted ceilings. And I really wanted that in my design. How am I gonna get a duct system from here through this vaulted ceiling over to this wing? I can't. So now I have two duct systems, one down here and one over here. Using the same example of the sizing of the one and a half tons, let's say we got three quarter tons, three quarter tons, and then they could both maybe feed the great room. So we've got two different duct systems, each of which is gonna take a piece of the great room with it too. But now that I have two duct systems, I'm gonna have two sets of filters, which will need to be replaced half as often. That's kind of nice, so it's, that's break even. But I now also have another couple problems. One is that I've got two pieces of conditioning equipment that's twice as expensive. If I'm gonna have an ERV system for dilution air, that's the other way you clean the air, I'm gonna have to have two of them. That's twice as much. And if you're buying an, a, an affordable, realistic ERV, you're looking at $1,000 to $2,000 for the piece of equipment alone. If you're buying the Ferrari of ERVs, you know what that costs if you've looked into it, like $11,000 to start. Um, you don't need that for every home, just to be clear. But um, so, so if we can find a way to get the ductwork to connect through this great room, which means soffiting down or exposed ductwork, and that's all things that you might have to convince yourself and your partner that you wanna do, um, then that could be very useful. The other thing though that we're gonna have a hard time with here is that we use when we build a central duct system, we use it as an, an interstate system, a highway that connects all of the rooms within the house. And so you can do things like deliver your dilution air into it. The ERV can dump straight into the supply uh, ductwork. And ductwork is not that hard. I know because I built my own ductwork for this house. And you can see that video I'm looking on screen now. We wanna use it to deliver dehumidified air around the house because of course there are gonna be days when it's 72 outside and 72 inside, but it's raining and we are bringing in rainy, damp air into the house all the time in an efficient home because ERV has to be running because we've got to dilute this air all the time, 24 hours a day. And so you're gonna be dampening the house on days when it's temperate outside. That's why you need this dehumidifier for what's called part load days. And if you wanna know more about manual J calculations, I'm linking a video on screen now. So this duct system might not just deliver 600 CFM of heating and cooling, that ton and a half. It might also deliver 350 CFM for the dehumidifier. It might also deliver 150 CFM for your ERV. It might also deliver, in our case of our kitchen over here, makeup air, because our kitchen is gonna have an exhaust hood in it that goes outside and it's gonna dump 400 CFM outside. That 400 CFM in a house like this, which the blower door test on this house might be 400 CFM 50, now I have to bring in makeup air. How, where am I gonna bring that? And am I gonna dump it into the return side of the uh, air handler? That would be really nice because if I've got a filter in line right before the air handler and I bring my fresh air from outside, I bring my makeup air, I bring my whatever else you want, I can bring it in through a filter and that's nice. No filter except for a HEPA or a MERV 16 is gonna pull everything out in one pass. So I immediately then put it through another filter put it through the conditioning device to be conditioned, mix it with the air from the house, and then distribute it where it needs to go. And all of that is very nice. So now we're looking at not 600 CFM, we're looking at the duct system that's more sized for something like 1200 to 1800 CFM, almost three times as much as what we initially thought with just the heating and cooling system. So if you're using radiant heating, you have no circulation in the wintertime, you have no filtration in the wintertime, therefore. So the air will be dirtier in your house. You will be more polluted inside in the wintertime than in the summertime. Interesting. Uh, if you're buying a piece of equipment to cool the house, might as well just go ahead and get a heat pump that can also heat it. And then you can rely on warm floors, but don't warm them all the way so that it's gonna heat the entire house up. 
If you're using high velocity systems, and that goes for a high velocity like a Unico uh, air conditioning system, you can't use that, you can't dump stuff into that because it's made to be just contain what it's delivering itself. Also, Zender. You cannot dump more stuff into a Zender system. So if you have a whole house dehumidifier and whole house mini splits, you have no way of delivering whole house dehumidification. So all this stuff, I just want to make sure is, is clear to people um, before you start designing out ductwork altogether. Ductwork is a beautiful thing. It enables us to do so many things within this five factors of ventilation. And again, if you did not see that video, I'm linking it on screen right now because you got to be able to understand all five of the factors and how they interlink with all the other stuff that we're talking about in home performance. Hope that this has been illuminating for you. Please caution your friends before they design out ductwork for heating and cooling. Um, make sure that you comment below if you have other things to add or questions. I address those personally. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.